Do you have your Bible? So I'm going to ask that you turn with me. Amen. To the eighth chapter of the book of Romans. Amen. Amen. And if you don't mind, I'm going to be sharing with you from the Amplified Bible today. I've learned to have an appreciation for this particular version of the Bible because it brings forth a different All right. way of looking at the scriptures and also being able to understand what it is that God is saying to us. And we're going to begin at verse number one. And again, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible, Romans chapter number eight. And if you're there, you should find these words, or words similar to these, depending upon whatever version that you have. <clears throat> Beginning at verse one, it says, therefore, there is now no condemnation, no adjudging guilty or wrong, for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life, which is in Christ Jesus, the law of our new being, has freed me from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law could not do, its power being weakened by the flesh, the entire nature of man without the Holy Spirit, sending his own son in the guise of sinful flesh, and as an offering for sin, God condemned sin in the flesh, subdued, overcame, Deprived it of his power Amen. over all who accept that sacrifice. Mm. So that the righteousness and just requirement of the yes, law might be fully met yes. in us yes, yes. who live and move not in the ways of the flesh, but in the ways of the spirit. Our lives governed not by the standards and according to the dictates of the flesh, but controlled by the Holy Spirit. The last verse. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires set their minds on and purpose those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the Spirit, amen, and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, rather, set their minds on and seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated Amen. in the presence of the Almighty God. Amen. Praise God. Today, we're going to be teaching on this passage of Scripture as found here in Romans chapter number 8. Um, actually, we're going to look down through verse number 14, but we just read to you the first five verses for the sake of our, our argument upon the day. And we're going to look at this particular topic, which is the believers walk. All right. The believers walk. If we were to choose a subtopic, it would simply be take a good look at yourself. Take a good Amen. look at yourself. Amen. For those of you who have not been taking advantage of our weekly Bible study. We've been teaching for some time now on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And it has been a very powerful and in-depth study that I have found that is also necessary for one to obtain and to be confident in his or her own salvation. Amen? For the past two or three months, our study has been focusing primarily on the fruit of the Spirit. And this last study that we've been on is teaching upon the works of the flesh. Amen. Now, every true child of God needs to be able to recognize the symptoms or the signs or the fruit of the life of the spirit. Amen? Amen. In the spirit, and we also need to be able to recognize what are the works of the flesh, which is the life of sin and death. 
For you see, when you do a self-analysis by taking a closer, realistic look, a view of oneself, a picture will emerge, should be a portrait, which should be a portrait of the person that you are. All right. Am I right about it? Amen. Now, let me do something for a minute. I need three volunteers to come down front. Three people, quickly. Amen. Now, I'm going to give one of you this mirror. One of you take the mirror. Doesn't matter who. Okay. All right. And then I need to get the other one of you. One of you to sit in the chair. Set the chair down front. Okay. All right. Okay, and then BJ, that leaves you to be the one who's going to take a picture of the one who's sitting down front. Okay. Now let me show you how this works. I want you to stand right here. And then I want you to take a close-up picture of Jada. And you push that little button right there. Push that button. Push it. Okay. Then I need you to step back a few steps. And I need you to push that button again. Take another picture up. All right. Now we're going to go here. And we're going to pull up those two pictures. Okay, I want you to hold it right there. Okay? Now, Kate, you have the mirror in front of you. Take a look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> what do you see? Pardon me? You? Okay. Flip the mirror over. Now, what do you see? Does one version or one uh, version of the mirror look different than the other? What's different about it? Speak loudly. One side looks low. Looks what? Looks blown up. One side is what? Blown up. Okay. And the other side looks regular. Looks normal. Okay. I want you all three to stand right there. Now, BJ, you took a picture of Jada, right? Right? Okay. Now, on one of the pictures, you took it close up. Is that right? Okay. And then on one of the pictures, you took it a little far away. All right. Now, I need you to show Jada the picture. Jada, does that look like you? Okay. All right. Flip over to the next picture. Does that look like you? This one. Which one do you think gives a better portrait of you? This one. Which is? The close-up. Okay. The close-up picture. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Give them a hand clap of praise. Amen. Now, in doing this assessment, when Katie took a look at herself, she had to be realistic in what it was that she was looking at. Am I right about it? Because sometimes when we look into the mirror, we do some deceiving of ourselves. Am I right about it? All right. Sometimes we see things that other folk don't see. I'm going somewhere with this. And then sometimes when we flip the mirror over, we see the same things, but we get a clearer picture. It's a little bit bigger. Come here for a minute, Tay. Just kind of pass this mirror around. I want everybody that will to take a good look at yourself. 
and be certain as you look in the mirror that you're seeing what it is that God no. would have you to see. That you're being real about it. And don't just look on the one side, but flip it over. Flip it over. Because see, it's only when we look at ourselves through the magnifying glass of God's word do we get a real good look of the person that we really are. Am I right about it? Yes. Now, when we think about what happened with the camera, you know, a camera will give us a picture or a portrait of us only at a point in time. I, I said something like this. All right. Amen. In other words, at the time that Jada was sitting there, the camera captured a picture of the person that she is, or should I say was, at that particular moment. Amen. And even though the day has not yet passed, yeah. there are still things going on throughout this day, right. throughout this hour, throughout this moment, amen, All right. All that right. shapes us and molds us amen. and determines yes, our character, Lord. the type of character or person that we are. I'm going somewhere with this thing. Amen. So in other words, when we took a close-up picture of her, that reveals an in-depth look into the person that she was at that moment. But all too often, we walk at a distance. Hello, somebody. Or we keep ourselves at a distance, not only from God, but from one another. Amen. Because see, some people don't like to get up close and personal. Ah. Am I right about it? Yes. In fact, the way you sit in here this morning, let's be know that you don't like to get up close and personal. All right. Amen. Yeah. Come on, Amen. Amen. Folk got to beg you. Come on in closer. Oh, Folk got to beg you to come on down front. All right. All right. Folk got to beg you to open up your mouth and say something about the goodness of God for what he's done for All you. All right. Amen. You acting like you want to praise, want me to praise him for what he's done for you. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. But like the songwriter said, Hallelujah. you can't tell it like I can. Right. I can't tell it like you can. Yeah. Because only I know what God has done for me. You better say something. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I mean to go that way, but, but yeah. we're just going to do what, whatever it is that the Spirit say to me. Amen. Amen. So when we flip the side of the mirror, we get a more realistic or natural view of yourself. That's right. Am I right about it? Amen. Now, when we began to conduct, some folk done got real tickle, amen. Amen. <laughs> Sometimes that mirror will show you some funny stuff. You be looking at it and be like, oh Lord, Jesus, I ain't know. <laughs> Forgot your mirror K. <laughs> but when we begin to conduct a personal examination, we should do so by taking a complete inventory of our own lives. Am I right about it? Amen. And in this inventory, we are to look for the presence of either the fruit of the spirit or the works of the flesh. Mm. Now, I don't know how many enjoyed that study as we were going through the Bible study, but that this last one is something else. Amen. Right, right, amen. I mean, I, I enjoyed the one on the fruit of the Spirit, amen, and, and y'all probably did too because you got to eat some fruit. <laughs> <laughs> amen. For those of you that haven't been coming, they got a good diet of fruit, amen. 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 Some grapes, some plums, amen, some pears, amen, and all of those good things like that. They were blessed with that. All right. Simply because we were teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. But more so than that, they were able to discover what those fruit were and how those fruit are produced and how it was that God demands, rather, that we be filled with the fruit of the Spirit. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. Now that should have been even more so of a blessing than the fruit.